ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to punawala film call limited q4 fy24 results conference call as a reminder all participant line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr hirin shah head of investor relation strategy and biu thank you and over to you sir thank you riya good evening everyone and thanks for joining this conference call it is our pleasure to welcome you all to discuss punal of incorps business and financial performance for the quarter and year ending march 31 2024 to discuss all this in detail i have with me our managing director mr abhay bhutara our executive director mr sunil samdani and other senior management officials and myself virensha head of strategy biu and investor relations now i would like to request our managing director mr abhay bhutara to brief you all about company's operational and financial performance along with development for the quarter ending march 31 2024 over to you sir thank you viren good evening everyone i welcome you all to the serving call of punala fincorp and i hope you are doing great before i give a snapshot of our performance and highlights of the quarter and the financial year gone by i will first start with a quick macroeconomic update we are in middle of a dynamic macroeconomic environment with a convergence of multiple factors ranging from inflation interest rates and geopolitical conditions which influence the economic decisions looking at inflation control which is one of the critical goals for the economy the current projections indicate a manageable scenario in terms of the monsoon as predicted by skymed monsoon season is expected to be normal agriculture production could remain stable thereby controlling food inflation a normal monsoon is crucial as it directly impacts the inflation and growth rates the agriculture sector's outlook which is heavily dependent on monsoon also be a significance for the rbi's policy framework further looking at the crude oil prices the volatile nature of crude oil prices intensified by geopolitical tension presents an external challenge for the economy with crude oil prices expected to remain elevated one will need to account for the impact of higher energy cost on inflation and the current account deficit the reserve bank of india's monetary policy earlier this month decided to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5% as retail inflation continues to be above its target of 4% according to rbi India's GDP is projected to grow at 7% in FY25, while the retail inflation is likely to be at 4.5%. In the post-monetary policy press conference, RBI Governor did mention that inflation is moderating and the GDP growth is robust. The overall outlook remains largely positive, while the GDP growth for FY24-25 is retained at 7%, a bit lower than 7.6% of last fiscal. It is still a good growth. Retail inflation is expected to average. 4.5% this fiscal much lower than 5.4% in fy24 with rural, rural demand catching up consumption is expected to support economic growth in fy25 outlook for agriculture rural activity appears bright with good rabi crop and improved prospects of kharif crop due to expected normal monsoon strong rural demand moderating inflationary pressure and sustained momentum in manufacture and services sector will boost private consumption the headwinds from geopolitical tension and increased disruption in trade routes may pose risk to the outlook however in my view there may be a slight adjustment in interest rates over next couple of quarters to support economic growth while keeping inflation in check the fundamentals of india economy are strongly depleted and it presents an opportunity for us as we expect this to get translated into steady credit growth for both msme as well as consumer segments our efforts to build a strong and sustainable msme and consumer segment focus organizations position us best to leverage this opportunity and in the process enable the dreams of our customers let me now take you through the company's performance for the financial year ended 31st march 2024 i am excited to share with you all an update of it another fantastic year of all round performance i feel proud of the last three year journey to spread the biggest transformation of punawala finco that the nbc space has ever witnessed when we acquired magma we set ourselves on an ambitious journey well expressed in our vision 2025 statement 
our execution excellence has ensured that we have continuously outperformed and consistently given superior performance, resulting in achieving significant milestones of our AOM crossing 25,000 crore and profit after tax crossing 1,000 crore. We also recorded the highest ever quarterly disbursement and best in class asset quality numbers, resulting in an overall superlative performance. Our differential strategy and relentless execution are reflected across all business metrics and have made us a thought leader in the lending space. This year has been a phenomenal year across the board for us, with quarter four being the best ever quarter. Now let me take you through the key financial number for the quarter. We reported our highest ever quarterly disbursement of rupees 9,688 crore, up 52% year on year, 11% quarter on quarter. On asset under management side, we stood at 25,003 crore, reflecting a growth of 55% year on year, 14% quarter on quarter. As regards the composition of our total AM, MSME constitutes about 37% of our book, followed by personal and consumer finance at 23%, loan against property at 16%, and pre-owned car contributing to 15%. The secured to unsecured book stood at 49% to 51%. The secured book is growing at a steady rate as disbursement in LAB, POC, and MSME continue to grow. Despite of our decision of sale of housing, we have been able to maintain, maintain the ratio of 50-50 approximately on towards the secured and unsecured book. With longer tenure of lab book, we expect our secured book to continue to grow. Our guidance on the secured to unsecured mix is 50% each in the medium to long term. On the tenure mix of our book, the short tenure loans up to 12 months, then are stood up 15% of the book as per our guidance, while the medium to long term loans of more than 12 months are at 85%. The tenor mix is helping us to improve our profitability while also keeping the AOM growth in place. We continue to be a national player with our presence across 19 states, having a branch network of 102 branches. The portfolio continues to grow across all our markets and we have a well diversified geographic spread of portfolio with no large market concentration. Our portfolio is also well diversified across both MSME and consumer segment. Asset quality continue to be the best in class and in line with our guidance. Gross NPS stands at 1.16%, down by 28 bits year on year, 17 bits quarter on quarter. While net NPS is at 0.59%, down 19 bits year on year and 11 bits quarter on quarter. The asset quality is reflective of our prudent credit policy and right selection of customers. Our provision coverage ratio is stood at 49.39%. Our cost of borrowing stood at 8.17% for Q4 FY24 as against 7.5%. 99% in Q3 FY24. Our cost of borrowing continues to remain one of the lowest in the industry despite hardening of rates due to tight liquidity condition and increase in risk weight. Our net interest margin stood LD at 11.06% during the quarter, which is up by 4 bits quarter on quarter. Our operating efficiencies continue to improve further. The OPEX to AM ratio has come down drastically by 144 bits from 5.43% in quarter 4 FY23 to 3.99% Q4 FY24 of the 3.99% and 0.64% is contributed by ESOP charge. So if you exclude this 0.64 which is a ESOP charge, so we have maintained the OPEX to AM below 3.5 much uh, better than our guidance. Reduction in OPEX ratio signifies the productivity enhancement that have been achieved. As we grow these ratios, we should continue to optimize this further. The interplay of all the above is reflected in superior profitability. The operating profit for the quarter is rupees 409 crore, which is up by 93% year on year and 17% quarter on quarter. Profit after tax for the quarter stood at 332 crore, which is up by 84% year on year, 25% up on quarter on quarter basis. Our return on asset was at 5.73% for quarter 4 FY24 which is up by 73 bips year on year and 42 bips quarter on quarter is one of the highest in the industry as you speak. I will take this opportunity to give a quick recap of the successful transformation that we have done over the last three years since the acquisition of Magma, which was a three decade old company. When I reflect at the Q4 FY21 deck, where we first mentioned the strategy after taking over the Magma and me taking over as the managing director of Punal of Incom, the journey so far, I feel happy and satisfied to see the tremendous progress that we have made. We had clearly defined strategy of what and how we wanted to deliver. Our product strategy, target market, customer focus, multi-tier customer proposition, branch rationalization, robust corporate governance, 
risk management and digital focus along with the best in class technology and analytics have all combined to enable the fantastic result and successful transformation of the company we have delivered on all the point whatever we have mentioned 3 year back at the time of acquisition you can validate each of the point within the defined timeline and in fact not just delivered but surpass the expectations too the visible transformational shift in the number from december 20 that is pre acquisition till 31st march 24 is a clear reflection of the well thought through strategy along with the clinical execution a look at these numbers gives an understanding of the scale of the under transformation undertaken our aom has increased by 2.4x to 25000 crore over the last 3 years the gnp and nnpa have reduced significantly from the levels of 8.23% and 5.35% respectively to 1.16% and 0.59% respectively the return on asset has increased multifold from 0.04% to industry best number of 5.73% on efficiency and productivity metrics aom per employee has increased from 2.14 crore to 11 crore per employee is one of the best in the industry the profit before tax per employee has increased from 12 lakh to rupees 68 lakh 0.12 lakh to rupees 68 lakh employee headcount has reduced from 5431 to 2384 majorly because of the digital model what we have while number of branches have been consolidated from 255 to 102 all the above improvements across the parameter was well reflected by a three notch rating upgrade from double a minus from k rating agency to triple a by crisel and care we are one of the very few nbfc in the industry being rated by crisel triple a the approach of digital first play cashless collection data driven lending and lean structure is well entrenched in the organization today and has been key contributor of this transformation story we continue to move in line with our vision 2025 while we are maintaining the same growth rate to focus on our customer segment of prime bureau tested customer having lower credit risk we also continue with our customer centric approach that is optimum pricing best turnaround time convenience and excellence in customer service this approach has ensured that as we have grown we have created differentiation for ourselves in the marketplace thereby providing us right to win we have built a significant digital presence while going deep in urban and cb urban market focusing on risk adjusted return delivery rather than just spreads by leveraging technology for operational efficiency our fresh strategy execution of consolidate grow and lead was spread over 3 years period as consolidation for initial first 9 to 12 month growth over next 9 to 18 month lead over next 18 to 36 month we have ensured that we have flawlessly executed our fresh strategy and we are already in the lead phase now our leadership in the products geographies we operating in the process of good governance risk management along with analytics is visible and providing us the competitive advantage the same have been well acknowledged by the industry across this team there have been many first in this journey which has cemented our place as a thought leader we were the first one who set out to make a tackled nbfc in its true sense it was not an easy decision but we were very clear that for us to build a future ready organization we need to do the hard work now what it has resulted is something no one in the industry has ever achieved an inverse relationship between headcount and group we are today 44% of the headcount from the pre acquisition level while we have more than doubled our aim we are the only nbfc irrespective of the scale which has defined linear growth in manpower and business as well we are the first one who caught the trend of changes in consumer preferences and moved away from branch led to a branch light model while the industry is expanding the branch footprint we have grown by consolidating the branch network we focus on going deep rather than going wide and the same has yielded tremendous result for us we are today having a decent market share in geographies we operate in making us a significant player in the lending space for most of the products we have been pioneers in adapting technology to service our customers better we are the first one to provide a full stack customer service solution through whatsapp journey this has ensured that we have moved our customers to do it yourself journey thereby not just empowering them but also enhancing their overall experience more than 70% of our customer service interaction are now digital we have also created an industry first feature wherein anyone can access their bureau report through the whatsapp this is a part of our customer engagement awareness and education series we have seen good traction here and getting positive reviews from the industry about this we are the leaders in providing wealth creation opportunity for our employees 
with ESOP coverage. We have given ESOP to more than 300 employees and lot of incentive scheme to retain the top talent what we have as we speak, which are the best in the industry and drive efficiencies across lines of businesses. We are one of the youngest organization to be certified great place to work and have made our way into the top 50 in BFA space in such a short span of time. Our wellness program have become an industry benchmark and got industry-wide recognition. I am proud of the risk and good governance culture that we have built in the organization. We always believed in and built a credit-led model. Today we have some of the best risk management practices, early warning signal, scorecard, business rule engine, fraud risk management framework, operational and enforcing risk management practices, corporate governance and compliance are one of the critical elements in any financial services business and we maintain the highest standards in the same. Our technology stack today is one of the best in the industry. The end-to-end -end digitized journeys with the use of all available technology solutions to automate and digitize the processes have been our hallmark. We use the best solution available without compromising on the InfoSec risk. The stability of system and customer convenience, we have all our system on cloud, thereby enhancing the system's availability and scalability. Our sales and distribution are multi-prolonged with a balanced mix of direct, channel, and digital. The digitization and automation in sales is helping increase the efficiency of our sales workforce and is a productivity driver. In collections, we have adopted technology to ensure that cash collections are almost negligible. Today, we have reached a level where our cash collections are lowest in the industry. All these have been possible because of our forward-thinking approach and our ingrained philosophy of going for excellence in all that we do. We have grown as an organization in a full 360 degree way. As a sustainable organization, always we have a holistic approach to growth. Today, I can proudly say that we are an organization which has learned not just adopt to the best practices, but create the best practices for others to follow as well. Over the last three years, we have been able to build critical blocks for our next phase of journey. The progress on the product launches, brand consolidation, digital transformation, risk culture, along with the people agenda, have been some of the key wins for us. As we have seen, the lending environment has undergone a lot of change over the last couple of years and will continue to further evolve. Our agility has been our biggest strength, and we believe that this trend will continue to help us succeed in the future as well. As we are in the last leg of our vision 2025, we have already started work towards the next and are well positioned and confident of delivering a consistently superior performance on the back of strong foundation built over the last three years. I firmly believe we have it all that is required to build a truly sustainable organization. I would also like to take this opportunity to, th to thank you all for the support extended to me in carrying out this huge transformation exercise. This successful transformation has been made possible because of unwavering support of all our stakeholders. The success is not mine alone. It's a culmination of efforts put in by the entire team for each of the projects, each of the challenges faced resulting in the successes that we experienced together. None of it was easy and we had our own share of exceptional challenges but we stood up firm and faced them head on with our grit and determination and emerged out much stronger. This has ensured that we have been shaping our future productively and, uh, and we have been a creator. Every interaction with each one of you has been a special one and I really enjoyed meeting and speaking to each one of you. The discussions have always been thought provoking and have helped me immensely. It's been a privilege to lead, lead such an exceptional team and to interact with such distinguished investor community. I look back with immense pride and I would like to express my deepest gratitude for trust and confidence placed in me over the year. Thank you once again. And now I will request our Executive Director, Sunil Samdani, to t take you through the financial and operational aspects of the business. Thank you. Thank you, Abhay, and good evening, everyone. Let me take you through the financial and operational updates. <clears throat> Let me start once again highlighting two significant achievements. First, we crossed the 1,000 crore PAT mark for the full financial year, which now stands at 1,027 crores. And second, we crossed the 25,000 crores AUM mark as on March 24, which now stands at 25,003. As we all know, the interest rate environments remain tight for the quarter and is expected to do so in the near future. In line with that, our cost of borrowings have gone up by 18 basis points quarter on quarter to 8.17%. While the same has increased, it is in line with the industry increase. 
Our cost of borrowing has moved up, but we continue to be among the lowest cost fundraiser in the industry. Again, while the cost has increased 18 BIPs, we have been able to pass it on to our customers, and this has resulted in improving our NIMS by four basis points from 11.02% to 11.06%. We will continue to diversify our liability franchise to further optimize the cost of borrowing. Majority of our portfolio on the lending side is on the fixed rate basis, while our borrowings are on a variable rate. Hence, as and when the interest rate starts coming down, we will benefit from the same, and it should help us improve our names further. On the ALM side, we remain comfortable with positive cumulative mismatch across all buckets, and we carry a sub surplus liquidity of 3,932 crores as of 31st March 2024. The LCR on that date stands at 130.45% against the regulatory requirement of 85%. We continue to gain on our operational efficiency and our OPEX to AUM ratio stands at 3.99% in Q4 of FY24. This was 4% in Q3 and 4.18% in Q2 of FY24. If we compare it with the previous year, same quarter, it stood at 5.43%. These OPEX ratios are one of the best in the industry. As far as margins are concerned, as we spoke, it's up four bits quarter on quarter at 11.06%. This has been possible because we focus on low-risk customers and optimal product mix and low cost of borrowing. Now coming to customer acquisitions, we are constantly working on broadening our customer funnel through a digital model while maintaining a superior risk management aided by data accessibility and technology. We are now focused on further enhancing paperless journey for all loan products as well just like we did it for consumer and personal finance. We believe the essence of building a complete digital lending experience is using technology across all product lines and strive to use digital across all forms of lending. As we continue to further enhance our app journey, we expect more direct acquisition in our secured lines as well. In addition to app, we are actively using WhatsApp channel, not only for lead generation, but also for a full loan journey along with customer service. We believe this is an investment for future as customers are having preferences for appless solutions as well. We will stay invested across our app, web, and appless channel. Now coming to customer service, we have developed multi, multiple customer service touch points to ensure quick and effective service delivery, such as WhatsApp, app-based self-service, call centers, branch-based customer touch points. Our WhatsApp channel today addresses more than 70% of our customer requests, which helps us to be instantaneous as well as cost-effective. Customer service is a mode that we have and we are working to further strengthen on the same. On internal service level agreements, we ensure that we address any customer queries in minimum time period. On the collection side, we have built a robust digital infrastructure for collection in addition to a strong in-house workforce of more than 400 employees. More than 95% of our total collections are through digital models. This has helped us to be cost effective and efficient on the ground. In addition to this, we have a technology framework to ensure systemic review of our daily rigor to further maintain overall effectiveness. We continue to invest in latest collection solutions as we see collection channels changing in line with the changes in payment system. On people front, I'm happy to share that we have been progressing our efforts to build a healthy workplace with the right culture. As a young organization, we work tirelessly towards making PFL an aspirational workplace and our efforts have yielded results as we secured a place in top 50 list of best place to work in India in BSSI sector for 2024. This is a moment for pride of us as we rub our shoulders with some of the biggest names in BSSI space. Also to pursue our creating of a healthy workplace, we focus on employee wellness and that has let us getting recognized as India's best workplace in health and wellness. Apart from our technology interventions in HR like Amber, which in an HR chat box, we have 
accepted well, which is accepted well in the industry, we have taken multiple initiatives in past few months to ensure that we keep moving towards be building a people-centric, future-ready organization. To summarize, on an overall basis, we are well placed on the operational aspects as we continue to further improve the operational efficiency. Technology is being leveraged across, all the, across the board to get more gains. Also, as we see that the environment is more dynamic than ever, hence we are also looking at all our internal processes closely to see for the changes, improvements, and enhancements as may be required. We have a roadmap for what we want to do and, what we have, and for which we are working on actively. Customer service continues to be an area where we want to spend disproportionately. We are adding more and more digitization in customer service as we see customers wanting more self-service uh, options as, at their convenience. We are also investing in HR tech to further improve internal employee experience. Productivity and efficiency continues to be our driver as we look improving further our best-in-class benchmarks. Also, we continue to recalibrate our product mix to ensure we have an optimally balanced portfolio. We have ticked the right boxes in our journey so far, and as the result of the same is visible across matrix of our growth, profitability, and efficiency. Our strategic thinking, execution capabilities, and agility have been our core strength, and our journey ahead, we will build on it. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Abai for his exemplary leadership and invaluable contribution in transforming the organization into a high growth, high effic highly efficient, and highly profitable organization. Thank you, everyone. We can now start the question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Samir Bissi from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a strong quarter. Uh, also, uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Butara for having delivered one of the most remarkable transformations uh, in, in recent times in NBFC. I had a few questions, uh, firstly being uh, what still remains as the fundamental pillars with respect to Poonawala FinCorp after you move ahead? And, and would there be any scope for uh, improvement with respect to uh, some easy pickings uh, in the business? Uh, that would be one. And secondly, uh, given that we are seeing increased regulatory scrutiny and stringent actions uh, in the space as a whole, uh, how is Poonawala FinCorp placed? Uh, some thoughts there would be useful. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Yeah, thank you so much, Samir. So on the transformation side, if you see, uh, we have changed the product range, we have changed the target market segment, the choice of customers, uh, we have a prudent create policies. Again, we have done a lot of consolidation in terms of branches, manpower, we have done the technology, technology changes, most of the things are system driven, policy driven. We have enhanced the employee productivity and again we have shifted from uh, branch model to branch like model and again we have improved on the OPEX side and the focus area was the customer focus with a better tag and the customer service. So this is our differentiated business model from complete non-conventional uh, in the branch like model. So uh, we have explained in detail multiple times in all the investor call. So these are the factors, both internal as well as the external changes as resulted in this great transformation. And we need to continue with the strategy to continue with the good work. And this is not the first time we are doing as uh, we are multiple times I have explained. I was running my own NBFC tap capital, which I sold to Mr. Adapura in 2019. And after three years of their experience of into digital lending, I was the first one to go complete digital. And then Punala Finance, which was unlisted in BFC as the group for two years. So this is the uh, third stint. This is not an overnight uh, transformation. So we have learned a lot of things in the past. We always used to do uh, right off at 90 plus most of the products since last seven, eight years. So we have a bit of uh, controlling the credit cost at the time of sourcing only. 
So I think considering all this past experience, we have done the complete transformation here. And most of the people, uh, what you see here, uh, the core team is from the existing uh, Punawala finance team, uh, starting from Manish Chaudhary, who is the head of retail asset, Anupa Garawal, who is the internal audit head, Manoj Gujaran, who is the compliance head, Osmita, who is the HR head, and a lot of other business head and credit people, accounts, finance team, uh, integrity wise, and the uh, hard working and uh, industry specific knowledge. Because we always wanted to grow that company, uh, though it was unlisted. Then we got this opportunity and then we acquired and we have done the transformation. So uh, I think uh, though uh, according to the industry, it is one of the uh, successful and the fastest transformation. There is a lot of hard work behind this and we have a right team and technology was in place. And again, further we announce on that. So this is answer to your first question. And on the regulatory side, uh, uh, I think historically we have seen that any regulatory changes has always been beneficial in the long run. And we always follow and we are in line with alignment with what the RBI is expecting. And secondly, with strong capital base, credit rating and prudent risk management practices, we are well placed to encourage this opportunity as the weaker hands will find it difficult to cope up comparatively going forward as the interest rate starts to come down, we will be an, at an advantageous position as majority of our advances are on a fixed rate, whereas majority of the our borrowing are at a variable rate. Thirdly, as an organization, we are more focused on compliance, governance and risk culture, which will be further helpful for us in this tackling the regulatory environment. Uh, this is very helpful. Just one clarification. Uh, there's a 330 crore profit for this quarter, 332. And the last quarter net worth was around 8075. Uh, but the closing net worth for this quarter is roughly 8114 something. Uh, can you explain the difference, please? So, uh, I think opening net worth uh, as on 31st December 2023 was 8075 crore. Uh, ESOP conversion, you can add around 50 crore. You can add the profit for the crore, uh, profit for this quarter, which was 332 crore. And uh, you can less the payment of interim dividend, which is 154 crore. And since we have created this ESOP trust, so this accounting adjustment, treasury share you need to consolidate. It gets consolidated and you have to deduct 187 crore. So it comes to 8116 crore, but in real sense, you have to add back this 187 adjustment of this ESOP trust, which we created for the employee. So 8116 plus 187 crore will be the actual net worth, but on paper, 8075 plus ESOP conversion 50 plus addition of profit 332 minus payment of interim dividend 154 minus ESOP trust treasury share which got consolidated, which is 187 crore, then it comes to 8116 crore. Okay, uh, that helps. Uh, thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ketav Shah from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Congratulations, sir, uh, on a good set of numbers. Uh, my number one question to you is on growth. You have delivered industry-leading growth numbers. So, A, what has contributed to, to this in the last, you know, three to four years and how do you see the growth path from here on? See, uh, so across all products, uh, I think we have seen the growth of uh, pre-owned car, loan against property, personal loan, business loan, all other, if you see, uh, all these, these are the main four products wherein, I think if you do the apple to apple comparison, then we have taken a uh, leadership position. We're already in top two in this segment. And always we have focused on the top 100 geographies and our approach of going deep rather than going wide. So market focus being urban and semi-urban, focus on building the right digital processes that make the entire model more scalable. And if you see the uh, entire, uh, whenever we think of building the entire organization, which has a tech focus, these are the main reasons behind this growth number. And long back, one year back, we stopped new to credit. Considering the low base, considering the total addressable market, considering the target segment, uh, going forward, whatever guidance we have given, we are confident of achieving uh, the numbers in terms of growth. Got it. Uh, so my second question is um, related to asset quality. I mean, we've consistently improved the asset quality. Uh, do you see any challenge uh, in uh, maintaining this going forward? Also in the context of some uh, peer NDFC seeing uh, higher credit costs and actually even guiding for uh, for the near term a higher credit, credit costs. So how do you see uh, that for your firm. 
See, uh, our focus has always been a credit led model rather than a collection led model. We are into risk business and not into the collection that was our model. We continue to strengthen our credit policies. This is our internal learning and I am happy to share that our GNP and NNP is one of the best in the industry and you can expect further improvement in both the GNP and NNP going further. And if you see uh, whatever numbers we have showcased GNP and NNP, so this is again including the legacy. If you see the uh, new book is performing better than our expectation. The segment which we are targeting, that is much uh, different than what others you are talking about the competition. So uh, we are confident of achieving our guidance in terms of GNP and NP, and uh, you can expect further improvement over the period of next four quarters in both the GNP and NP. Got it. Uh, and um, you know, we have seen uh, a, a rising in scenario even when peers are struggling. Uh, and we also have some amount of increase in the cost of funds. So how do you see the invest, interested environment uh, going forward, particularly for you? So can we expect a similar kind of performance for next year, or do you think that the cost of funds can impact? Yeah, so uh, as we speak, we are among the lowest in terms of cost of fund. Last year we got Crystal Triple A rating. There are very few NBFC at this size, uh, those who got uh, Crystal Triple A rating. And uh, recently we have started uh, uh, borrowing from the commercial paper and short term limits considering the, our uh, ALM thing. So considering that we have enough scope, we have one of the best ALM in the industry. So going further, uh, depending on the requirement, we'll focus uh, on this NCD as well as on the CP side. So you can expect uh, quarter three onwards, there will be a further improvement on the cost of fund side. And on the NIM side, uh, we have always guided that we will be able to maintain NIM above 10%, but we have delivered uh, above 11% during the last four quarters. And going further also, uh, the same guidance we will continue, which we have given in the past, that uh, uh, because we target the risk adjusted return, the low OPEX model, and overall other thing on the name side also on the super, uh, profitability side also will continue with our existing guidance got it thank you sir and one last question if i can flip it in i uh, see yes. you briefly touched about the transformation of, of how the journey has been over the last three four years uh, so in your mind where have you reached in this uh, journey so far um, and you know what would be it going ahead uh, especially in the context of RBI tightening its uh, uh, regulatory reach. Uh, so, I mean, you know, where do you see this uh, journey now? Are, were there any low-hanging low fruits that you can tighten up in terms of uh, compliance, etc.? Or I think we're pretty good enough from that standpoint. I think we have a very unique uh, business model which we have created and we have explained by our investor presentation also that we have a combination of digital and digital mode. We have a unique combination of FinTech, Bank and NBFC. FinTech in terms of the user experience. Bank in terms of fair practice and uh, no hidden charges to the customer. NBFC in terms of practical approach and cash flow based lending. So uh, that is the main reason why we are different than the others. In terms of the regulatory environment, I think we got one of the highest advantage because of the environment reason being as a Punawala group, considering the uh, legacy of the group, I think we follow the highest level of corporate governance or compliance led by Mr. Manoj Gujarat is one of the top guys we have in our team and constantly uh, we focus because uh, we, we are not going to compromise on the compliance. So if you see on the KFS side or any, we are offering zero prepayment across all our products Hardly there is any complaint with regards to mis-selling or hidden charges from the customer side because our approach was customer-centric approach from day one. We are the only NBFC who is offering at this scale. Zero prepayment. This I am telling you all uh, since last more than two years in each of the investor call. So considering right. all these things, whatever is happening, regulatory environment, I think it is beneficial for the sector. And uh, with regards to Punala Finco, I think we will be the biggest advantage. We'll get the biggest advantage out of whatever the tightening policy from the regulatory side. And here, uh, internally also, on a quarterly basis, we are reviewing all our policies. The base is so low, we don't see any challenge uh, in terms of the growth. So we have enough getting choice of rejection. We have created that choice of rejection model. So as I told you, unless customer, once we reject the customer, then only is going to the market because uh, you will not get all the things at one place. Lesser rate, reasonable processing phase, 
or turn around time, zero prepayment penalty, no hidden charges. It's very difficult to get everything at one place. So uh, I think we are very happy with all the regulatory uh, changes and uh, we are hopeful that uh, uh, now everyone, the entire sector will have to uh, focus more maximum on the compliance side. Got it. So thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mayuresh Joshi from William O'Neill. Please go ahead. Uh, afternoon, Abhay. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, my first question is on the OPEC side. You briefly touched upon that uh, with the previous panel. We have consistently seen improvements in the OPEC ratio. Uh, so, what is your forecast in the next few quarters? Uh, how do you see this ratio move from uh, the current standard? Yeah. So we are uh, constantly giving uh, giving the guidance that we are uh, trying to reduce the OPEX. If you see last four quarter, there is a consistent reduction in the OPEX year on year. Also from starting 5.5 .5 level to almost at four level, we have reduced. And this includes ESOP charge of 0.64% also. So this is net OPEX ratio. If you see, this is only 3.35%, which is again one of the best in the industry. And as we continue to focus on the productivity and efficiency and our AM increases, you can expect further improvement on the OPEX going forward. Uh, that helps, Abhay. I might have uh, missed this one, but can you just um, guide us for uh, how do you see the next financial year, both in terms of growth, profitability, and you briefly touched upon asset quality as well. So how do you see the asset quality playing out for, uh, over the next few years? So I think we'll stick to our guidance, whatever long-term metrics guidance we have given, 35 to 40 percent guidance we have given on the growth side. And on the GNP side also, we have given the guidance, net NPA. So whatever guidance, if you see, uh, we have given, I think we'll be able to maintain that. Profit growth of 30-35% we already given uh, in the investor presentation. GNP 1.3 to 1.8. Net NPA guidance we have given 0.5 to 0.9. AOM growth we have given 35 to 40. And ROA guidance we have given 4 to 4.5%. And whatever guidance we have given, I think, uh, if you see the consistently last eight quarters, we have over-delivered uh, on all these parameters. And we'll continue to maintain on the same guidance. Yeah, that certainly helps, Abhay. We are uh, confident of achieving this. Yeah. Sure. Uh, just one last question. Uh, this might be a little bit personal uh, from my side, but it would be great if you can help me. Uh, I've been tracking Punawala, your contribution in terms of Punawala's performance, and the performance has been fantastic in Q4 for the entire part of FY24. We're guided for a very strong FY25. So when everything is going so well, uh, the company is seeing a good turnaround, you're in the driving seat, what prompted this sudden, sudden change of MD, out of the MD position? Because I think a lot of people on the street are probably viewing this on why and for what reason has this happened. See, at the outset, I would like to uh, thank for the uh, kind words on the company's performance and uh, individual performance. It was not sudden change, but uh, in fact, a well thought out decision. After having successfully transformed this three decade old uh, uh, SIC, almost a SIC unit to one of the most prominent MBFC in the country as we speak, this platform is very well worth for the next level of growth, for the next leg. And uh, as I did not wish to be occupied by the day-to-day -day operations, since uh, it was my decision only, uh, I have requested and I have convinced uh, Chairman Mr. Agar Punala that I will not handle a day-to-day -day operation and I will play a strategic role at a group level and I'm ready to continue as an NAD and continue to guide the team. And if you see, I've always been an entrepreneur. I sold my tax capital digital lending startup to Mr. Punala in 2019 after running that for three years. Then there was unlisted NBFC Punala Finance. Technically, I uh, merged that tax capital into that. So I transferred team, technology, and majority of the loan book there. So we got AA plus standalone rating there. We built a book more than 2,000 in a short span of two years. We recruited a lot of team members. There was a plan to scale up Pan India. Then in between, we got this opportunity of Madman, then we have renamed it to Punala Think of This is almost my third stint. So I never uh, wanted a day-to-day -day operation. I think I uh, built this uh, company, built this products, and I thought now uh, I will focus. Uh, in fact, uh, I, uh, I wanted to do a lot of uh, things at a personal level, uh, diversification as well. So now I've been elevated at a group level to focus on strategic decision as well as to focus on the treasury. But here also I'm continuing as the non-executive director, continue to guide to the team in terms of strategy and other things. And this platform is well set 
for the next level of growth as transformation is fully done with all the post acquisition issues fully resolved during my tenure itself and uh, uh, so uh, and i have always been supported by our chairman mr adar punawala an entire board during the last 3 year i know it was very difficult to convince him then we have transformed everything so it was not a sudden decision and uh, we got the one of the best talent from the industry unless i get a good guy uh, there was no plan to change from md to nad we got one of the best guy from the industry who can head this uh, who is a retail who was a retail asset head in the hdfc bank now he is a mortgage head so considering that only then only uh, i could able to convince our chairman that uh, now i will not focus on day to day operation and uh, i will continue to guide as a nad and to operate at a group level uh, in terms of strategy in terms of treasury and few other important functions so absolutely so that's, that's uh, i can understand but it was well thought of uh, decision no need to worry i am here the entire team is fantastic and uh, most of the things are in auto mode yeah that certainly helps us so i think again congratulations on the great set of numbers but uh, a parting comment from my side that you definitely left an imprint on kunawar asinka and all the best for your elevated strategic role within the group itself uh, you will be missed at kunawar asinka thank you thank you so much thank you next question is from the line of samir vc from jm financial please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity again uh, just quickly what's the update on the credit card uh, co branded credit card that we had uh, announced a quarter or so back and secondly any other changes to the current team uh, that you envisage uh, the, those are my two questions thanks yeah so basically on the uh, co brand credit card side uh, we have received uh, the regulatory approval and uh, right now uh, we are ready to go and maybe in the month of may in next 2 to 3 weeks uh, we'll be able to launch the cobran credit card as considering the group philosophy in current the regulatory environment we have never done any kind of mis selling on any of the product so we wanted to though the industrial bank we have a tie up for cobran credit card though the entire risk of uh, the collection risk and so many other uh, uh, compliance thing are on them but as a group policy though since we are so seeing the customer will get the pay out one time pay out and some revenue sharing uh, as per the regulatory guideline at the same time we thought we will go ahead and then we have waited the entire thing uh, as we speak uh, as i told you uh, we have one of the best compliance here in punala fincorp that's why it took time and instead of launching in q4 we thought let us wait we are not in hurry because we are a long term player so now uh, everything is done now i think we are good to go and we have a strategy in place for sourcing as well as the integration with the cobran partner and the entire disclaimer product brochure no mis selling to the customer and the unique product proposition which uh, you will get to know in next two weeks wherein broad features are we are not charging any joining fee annual fee uh, otherwise there is no need of launch when you have so many options in the market so there also i think we will come out as per our strategy unique product proposition so we'll give you update in uh, next 2 to 3 weeks once we launch that cobran credit card and uh, on your question in terms of the management team see we have one of the best team for the retail nbfc and the digital lending space and we have a, who have a successful track record of delivering consistent superlative quarter on quarter performance and they have done the massive transformation in the sector so look at some of these resources like starting from uh, sunil samdani who is our executive director he joined 6 months back as a uh, if you see his experience in the bfs space more than 20 years and he was instrumental in setting up the bandhan bank for 9 year taking it to the ipo and scaling it further he has a deep understanding of the finance treasury risk management investment relationship then if you see our head of retail asset manish choudhury again he is a ex punawala finance the existing in the of the punawala group which was unlisted and uh, he has almost completed 5 year with the group 3 year with punawala fincorp 2 year with punawala finance and one of the best guy in the retail industry as we speak so uh, next manoj gujran who is our chief compliance officer again the old guy of punala finance two year and here three year five year of experience who is handling uh, the regulatory risk and the compliance and he has led the acquisition of magma sale of housing other regulatory task then anup agrawal who heads the internal audit function he has a deep understanding in managing risk audit function considering his background with a city bank kotak bank state bank of india and all mnc banks so smita mitra who heads the hr again the old punawala finance hr 
She has also completed five years. Before that, she was with leading NBFC and she was handling more than 8,000 people. So considering all these things, if you see Chief Risk Officer Rajendra Tatre, Hiren Shao is our head IR strategy BI. These are all experienced people, more than 20 years of experience, relevant skill set, NBFC background. So as we speak, we have one of the best team and we, we recruited this team. This team is, I think, uh, we can easily deliver more than 50, 60,000 crore a year. But transformation is a journey and we are going to invest in team and technology as and when required, depending on the new product launch, depending on the geography which we target, depending on the target segment. So as and when required, we are continue to strengthen the team, continue to strengthen the board and continue to strengthen the technology uh, as well, Samir. Oh, that's helpful. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of the day. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hirin Shah for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for joining this earning call with us. I would like to thank Abhay, sir, for all he has done for this organization, has built the best in the class management team, and he has showcased best in the industry turnaround in the history of BFSI. Uh, segment. Uh, he will be surely missed at our end and uh, he will be there for guiding us at the board level. Thank you, sir, for everything. For any further queries or communications, please write to us at investor.relations at punawalafincorp.com. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Punawala Fincorp Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.